consumers have changed. So how do we keep on winning? Because we do have to keep on winning because more than ever, the businesses now are relying on marketing to actually bring in the bacon because you know every business has been hit um, at a certain level. So five things that I'll take you through, things that matter as you plan to win in, with the consumer in the new normal. Um, and the first thing, it, it starts with you. And, you know, this is not a marketing thing. It's just that it starts with you, you know, and you have to embrace change. You know, our new normal is change, you know, and the world, the market, the consumers, everything is actually changing. And if you look at yourself and you look at the smallest things in your life, you know, your life has already changed. You know, we, I haven't gone to the office since March mid-March, you know. I haven't gone for a physical client meeting since April. Life has just completely changed. So if you look at yourself, even your little habits in your own house at home, you can see you've already changed. And that's how our consumers are. Consumers have changed. So it starts with us to really be able to embrace change. Um, and if you're that person who has a, you know, a challenge embracing change, then you need to actually almost put a structure in how you're going to uh, attack the new normal. The next thing about it starts with you is the fact that you really need to be nimble. And nimble is really about changing at the pace of your consumer. Um, and if you look at the things that were very, very big in March, you know, when we thought the world was coming to an end and we were buying tissue and shopping and buying so many things and shopping like crazy people and queues were crazy at the supermarket. Those things don't matter today, right? So for this period we are going through and as we go post pandemic, context is everything. Without understanding context, we won't be able to survive the new world. We won't be able to survive uh, connecting with the new consumer. So if you look at youth populations globally, you know, look at what has happened in Nigeria. Look at how Twitter in Kenya or Facebook, how consumers uh, react to things today. It's almost like the world is reacting differently because there's the pressure of the pandemic. Living on a day-to-day -day basis, you may not feel the pressure of living through a pandemic, but, as, uh, but cumulatively the anxiety the pandemic gives us creates a very different context to the consumer. Therefore, as a marketer, as a brand custodian, we really, really have to be nimble. We have to be very agile, meaning you could launch something today and tomorrow it doesn't work and you have to be ready and nimble enough to change and change very quickly. So how do we do this? So this is, a, you know, I really love this chart and it quickly just says what the old culture looks like and what the new culture looks like new during a pandemic and post pandemic you know now we are very devolved you know consumers are agey the comfort that people used to have that comfort is gone you almost don't know what tomorrow looks like uh, you don't know whether you're going to wake up and be told okay now we have this number of cases shut down you don't know right people are more um fighting for every little thing. So if you're looking at our consumers, at the bottom of the pyramid, the consumer is fighting for food. At the middle of the pyramid, the consumer is fighting for the things they were used to. At each of the consumer um, uh, target groups, consumers are fighting for something. Um, I don't know whether some of you attended the um, Kantar, I think, webinar, I think a week ago about COVID, uh, and I think she's speaking today, Kate, about COVID tribes. Please find that uh, deck and read it. Follow, you know, I think Kate posted something on uh, LinkedIn. It's quite um, useful to be able to understand the consumer groups during COVID and how you can actually talk to those consumer groups, okay? Agile, okay? And I think Agile, we've already spoken about it. At your service, and that's what consumers want. If you order something today, you want it faster, you want it better, you almost are demanding more from brands than what you used to demand before. So data and insights. And data and insights is something that is very close to my heart. Um, next week, I'm actually speaking with one of my colleagues at APA Week on data and insights, and you can join us then. But you have to really, as a marketer and as a brand person, to win with consumers in the new era, uh, era you have to stay very close to data and insights. You have to listen to your consumers and often, and actually look at data, 
find different sets of data. And there are very many partners you can look at data from, right? So you can look at data from Kantar, Ipsos, Geopol, uh, Pulse, I think they're called Pulse, yes, Pulse, Google. There's so many data sources, keep looking at data because that data is changing every day. Be in the know. It doesn't matter at what time you need to be in the know of what is happening with your consumer, what is happening with your brand. And sometimes, you know, data allows us to quickly step change what we are doing or to just flip something that we were doing. So um, let me find a good example. Oh, Glovo. I always say Glovo is a very good example for me because one day, um, I didn't know how to use uh, how you know how global worked, but as I they kept really telling me on their platform the things I can do on the platform. Today I do ninety percent of my shopping on global, and it's almost like they learn with me, so they use the data that I am shopping with, and they continue serving me what I'm looking for, right? Because they know what kind of consumer I am. So when I say data, it's just both internal data and external data. And internal data is so important today because it allows you to know what are your consumers doing, what is important to them, and how you can actually start shifting to understand those consumers more. Sometimes I think we focus a lot on external data and we forget the internal data. Internal data allows us to be able to say, hmm, it looks like consumers are actually using this product more than that other product. Then therefore this is the product I'm going to push. It looks like consumers are consistently going to this part of my app or this part of my website. The question becomes, what are they looking for there? How can I give them that information? One of the brands that I really like is Resolution. I feel like they've really changed during the pandemic. Uh, they've told me how to stay safe when I'm at home, whether I have COVID or don't have COVID. Um, they, then as COVID continued, they discovered, you know, actually consumers, um, are suffering, they're struggling with mental health because of the period we are going with. And they started doing uh, masterclasses and webinars about mental health, both for adults and for kids. And this is something we hadn't really thought about. How do kids feel being out of school and being at home all the time for eight months? It, you know, as an adult, it's different. What does that look like for a kid? And they started doing webinars, free webinars to serve that information. That's how we use data and insights to connect and win with the consumer that we have today. Oops, sorry. Be human. I think this is like an overly used word in marketing, but I don't think it has ever been more important as a brand and as a marketer to be human. As a consumer, the world is changing and it's very scary, you know? The possibility, when you look at how, you know, how, how is my life going to be tomorrow? I don't know. Will I be able to travel how I used to travel? I don't know. Consumers are actually in a very uncertain and scary time. This is one of our most uncertain times. And this space then calls for brands to be very human in their communication, in their products, in your strategy, and even as a marketer, as you do something, as you approve a plan, as you approve a creative, you have to put that human um, uh, heart more often than you used to. And humanity then allows brands to be meaningful. And meaningful brands are the brands that are going to connect to the consumers today and in the future. If you're a human brand, then you are meaningful. If you're meaningful, then you fit into the life I am living today. And this is not the life I was living in December of 2019. I was planning to go for a holiday. I had so much plans for Christmas. And now I'm like, oh, I don't know. What am I going to do for Christmas? I'm going to sit in my house in Nairobi. You know, I'm, you know, can I go up country? Will someone get COVID from me? That is the consumer you're dealing with. So even, you know, for example, if you're going to do a Christmas promotion, is that Christmas promotion human and meaningful to the consumer today? as opposed to the consumer you advertise to in 2019 of December. So I'm going to play something for one of the brands that I think it's, for me, is such a meaningful brand. And the reason I always uh, give an example of Coca-Cola is because Coke sells soda, but they've managed to make selling soda and the brand that sells soda very meaningful over the years. I'm going to play this ad. Wesleyan, please let me know whether the sound is working. Could someone tell me whether the sound is working? Yes, it's on. Yes, it's on. yes, it is. Thank you.
You know, I think this ad, the first time I watched it, it's so different from the fanfare Coca-Cola ads have during Christmas, right? They're about music, they're loud, you know, it's Christmas and it's, the, the vibe is completely different. But when you see this ad, you know, it's that exaggerated sense of drama and it has really worked. And really, what do most kids really want in 2020? It's just, it's very simple, right? The insight is just really simple, but they've executed it so brilliantly. Now, if you compare all the other ads Cook do during Christmas, you will see the difference of how they've created humanity with this ad, as opposed to the happiness and burst of fanfare they do with the rest of their ads. So, um, next, oops, okay. So, cost customers, you know, and I found this online the other day and I really loved it. And it's just, sorry, it just says customers don't buy products and services, they buy your energy, your stories, and your magic. And that ad, like, I found the ad and then I found this, uh, um, this, um, little, um, quotes, and somehow they just, the two of them answer, you know, they say the same thing. Coke, Coke is not trying to sell you a soda. Coke is selling you a story, the energy they bring. The story is so powerful. It's that magic of humanity that they're trying to sell us. Uh, if you look, if you go to YouTube, you'll find one of the ads Coke did, I think in April or June, June, uh, during the heat of the COVID. And the ad was very simple. It was not short, it was not models. It was real consumers across the world, nurses, doctors, um, old couples that had been uh, separated for months and were just showing the humanity of trying to connect. Just trying to connect with someone else when you're stuck in isolation. And that's what we have to do. We have to keep on trying to be human because I do believe strongly that the need for human connection and bonding is going to increasingly become more important as consumers get tired of this isolation, this being put, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. And brands must be aware of it and plan for it. Because you can imagine when you've been stuck at working from home, there was, you know, full year. The other day I was looking at my teams and I was like, we've not, we've worked from home from March. You know, how do those people then start? How do we ensure that as the new year comes, there's a bit of connection and bonding that's physical because it's quite difficult to just 
sit in your house and work from there all the time without being able to see your colleagues. Being human is going to be one of the biggest wins post COVID, during COVID in connecting with consumers and in winning with consumers in this new era. So the, the fourth one, adjust your strategy, you know, and keep adjusting. So, you know, we do annual plans, you know, those things, business plans, the, the annual communication plan, you know, you, do, you did it in 2019, December, you presented, it was approved, it was a fantastic plan, throw away that plan and start writing and adjusting your strategy according to the data and the insights you see for your consumers both the, uh, with the internal data and external data. Because the things consumers wanted before the pandemic and the things they want as they go through the pandemic are like day and night. And as marketers, sometimes we are selling the same product, but we have to communicate it differently for consumers to connect with it today. So you're still selling possibly the same product. You know, Coke has been selling Soda. But throughout the pandemic, they've had, I think, three pieces of communication that have been so different. Same product. There's a new KCB ad running now. It's a thematic brand ad. And it's so different from the last thematic they did, yet their positioning has not changed. Why? Because we have to be very cognizant of the consumer we are dealing with and adjust what our strategy looks like. Um, I think the other thing I thought about strategy for me was purpose. And with purpose, you have to ask yourself, is the purpose of the brand I have today aligned with what consumers need most? So think about it today as, uh, as a brand. Maybe your purpose is to drive sustainable development, you know? Air, you know, wind and big things like climate change and those things are still important. But maybe the biggest uh, audience that you have as a brand is the base of the pyramid. Now, what is important for that person? Food, putting food on the table. So are you then trying to still tell someone, I have this big agenda of um, uh, climate change when they don't have food and you're trying to connect with them and you can't. So even, you know, the strategy goes with our purpose, your brand's purpose. Today, if your brand's purpose is about being meaningful in people's lives, how do you become meaningful in your consumers' lives with what they're going today? There's uh, a charity we supported last month and they just give people food. And you know, there are people without food. So if you're a big brand and you're doing very many big things, but a majority of your consumers are struggling with food, then how do you even adjust some of your, um, your activities to actually support those consumers, to become linked to what those consumers are struggling with? Um, oh, I've already spoken quite a bit about relooking your purpose. You know, does it fit today's need? Is it in line with what your consumers need most today? Are you just stuck on it because, well, you know, you wrote it and you promoted it and you're, it's approved by the board, so we have to stick to this strategy and to this purpose. But if you're brutally honest as a marketer and as a brand person, lose your ego. Step into the world that we live in that is completely different, that consumers want very basic things from brands. And sometimes, you know, we are pu you're pushing an agenda that is too big, but what the consumer needs is just small, basic things 